Mike was the American Astronomical Society Solar Eclipse Project Manager at the time. And we started working together, um, talking about the eclipse, promoting the eclipse throughout the U.S., and talking about Carbondale. Um, and Mike helped us a lot in preparation for Carbondale in 2017. And he's come back here to talk to you today to tell you about his life experiences with the eclipse. And uh, so I'm happy to welcome him here. Let's all welcome Mike. Hello, Carbondale. Hello. 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 I'm Mike Kentrianakis. I don't know if you know who I am. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Somebody said it. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I became. And all because of eclipses. So I have a lot of stuff here because it's my whole life. It's my whole life. Started at eight years old. I was telling Bob, memories are coming back to me. How as a kid, I was running out into the street. And my cousin said, there's an eclipse today. I'm like, what do you mean? Well, what, what? Eight years old. I knew nothing about astronomy and I wanted to see it. It was cloudy out, or, or maybe it's over, we don't know. He didn't know, and I was like, I'm mad. I'm mad that this eclipse happened, I don't know about it. Nevertheless, uh, that's at eight years old, 1972. So afterward, I went to Greece, and it was uh, lots of clear skies, and my uncle, the fisherman, knew everything about the stars. He's pointing out all the planets and, the, and, and, and satellites and such in Greek, and I'm 11 years old. I just take a liking to astronomy. I get turned on about it, and I become engrossed in learning about astronomy. And I'm going to the library, and I'm reading every single book they have on the shelf. I'm like, is this it? And uh, I was at college level by the time I was in junior high in astronomy. And then, I'm going to go here, and this is just the next slide of all the eclipses I've seen. I've seen 25 solar eclipses, 13 total solar eclipses. But how did it start? In 1978, at 14 years old, I was pretty aggressive uh, in astronomy. I had telescopes. I was on my third telescope, and I had been reading Sky and Telescope magazine and the local newspapers, the science type sections and such like that. And Newsday, the local newspaper in Long Island, where I grew up in New York, was writing about the upcoming solar eclipse in 1979 on February 26th. This was going to be the last total solar eclipse in the United States for 38 years. And I want, they said they have one seat available with the Hayden and Vanderbilt planetariums to go to Winnipeg, Manitoba. If anyone's interested, please call Fred Trinkline at this number. I go to my parents, I'm 14 years old, I'm a paper boy. I'm like, I don't have $400, can I go on this? I'm like, that's a lot of money, $400 for a trip. It's like all inclusive. Uh, I said, I'll pay you back on my route. I'll pay you back. And uh, I don't know, we can't do it. They decide, your father and I talked, we're gonna let you go, we're gonna pay for the trip. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know what I'm getting into. I never, I never saw an eclipse before. And I called Fred Trinkline. He said, oh, what's your interest? I said, yeah, I'm just interested in astronomy and such. And uh, okay, you'll be the youngest member of our expedition, but welcome aboard. You're coming. Okay, start having our first meetings over there. And uh, before I know it, I'm packing up my old Jason Empire little telescope with a one inch and, and these nine... 965 uh, eyepieces and a sun filter, something you're never going to want to use, where you place it on the eyepiece and it burns the eyepiece, cracks and burns your eyeball out. So you don't want those. Those are gone, but they were sold then at your local store. So what happens? And I'm going to move pretty quickly because there's a lot of stuff to cover, but so hopefully you can keep up with a New Yorker like me. So uh, here we are in the deep wilderness of Lundar, Manitoba, north of Winnipeg, digging out of a 12-foot snowstorm. The local farmer plowed his way out, made a field for us there so he could set up our equipment. That's me. That's me. And here I am, not even posing for the group photo. Because I have to take down sunspot timings. It's important. It may be changing history in science. What do I know? The first, so they set up there with the Celestron, and I didn't put the slide in my very first shot. I was sorry about that. I couldn't find everything. 
And because uh, this is really data mining. We're talking about 1979. I don't just go on Google and pull that stuff. You got to get real prints. Yeah, I don't know if you know about film. You know, getting stuff done. You got a local guy say, I need this in uh, 8 by 10. He goes, why 8 by 10? 8 by 12 is the real format. And like, what? Hope I'm not over your head on that one. <laughs> so I see this eclipse, and I don't know what I see. I don't know how to describe it, but I'm taking it back. I don't have it recorded, uh, but I know I love it. And I, the first thing they come up to me, they interviewed me. I never got that record. And they said, uh, you want us, you come into the next one? I said, yeah, I'd love to. Where is it? In Kenya. Uh, Kenya, uh, okay, and then I'm thinking, that's going to cost thousands and thousands of dollars, you know, and again, I have a paper route that makes $30 a week. So I'm in Canada, and I love this, love this banner, because this reminds me of Carbondale when I got here. Repeat performance, 2339. <laughs> wow, that's a long wait. <laughs> Carbondale, what do you guys get? Seven years. Seven years. Do you know how lucky you are? You have no idea. No idea. I know. I knew before any of you knew. The other place, though, there is one other place that was lucky, Angola. But my best friend who went there was tied to a tree for 15 hours. <laughs> Literally. I, there, no stories will be made up in this lecture. So after that eclipse, we have like an eclipse drought, but we do have a rare eclipse in one that's uh, in that the moon and the sun are almost exactly the same size. So you don't get a total and you don't get an annular. And I'm assuming you know the differences between the two. One is too small, one is too large. So you get what's a broken eclipse, an annular total, but I call it a penannular. And everyone says, what's a penannular, Mike? Well, go to the OED. There's a word in there. There are brooches and archaeological digs. I looked up a word. It hasn't stuck, but I keep using it. It's a penannular eclipse. That's why I'm saying it, and people won't know. So that's my friends in my Mustang. But however, we go to Petersburg, Virginia, where maximum annularity is, and maximum annularity is a negative formula, so it's minus. You want the least amount of annularity to get the closer to totality. So totality, we look for duration, and annularity, we look for less duration. It's negative. It's a minus. So in Petersburg, a storm comes, and I'm there on the TV the night before in the hotel. I don't like I'm foreshadowing here what's going to happen, and I'm nervous as hell. My friends, what the hell am I going to do? Well, I go down to see Janet Matai, and she, God bless her, she was running the AAVSO. That's who the group I went with, the American Association of Variable Star Observers. And she said, Mike, a lot of people are moving. They're going south along Route I-84. And you could probably make the drive. There's supposedly a front that's coming in for clear skies. We drive, and then as we're going, clouds come. And they sweep up, and I start screaming, blue, 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 blue. Just crazy. Uh, my friend's like, what the hell? And these are my friends. And they help me set up, but I'm saying blue because I know what that means. That means. And here's some of my pictures, the first bite into annual, this annular eclipse. And you can see here, at the same exposure, it starts getting dark. And... There's the crescent much deeper, and there they are, uh, close to totality. I didn't know much about photography then. I wasn't an expert. I was 19 years old. I'm in college. I'm at NYU Film School. I take a break. Uh, I actually am in sight and sound class, and uh, I, say, I said, I got to go on this eclipse. I just need, need a day, because yeah, it was on the weekend too. And I, I, you know, driving down there, I come back. I stay at the Holiday Inn. We successfully see a perfect eclipse, and we see a very rare one. And here I am in the hotel room. They take a picture of me because I like, mission accomplished, basically. Next one. I'm going to go quickly here. Uh, Niagara Falls, Canada, 1994, an annular solar eclipse, a long an annular. So you're not going to get 
effects of like heavy beating and things like that. I'm going to say some technical terms that you're going to have to learn on your own. I'm not going to explain it. I'm not the guy to explain it. I'm going to tell you my stories. And Niagara Falls sounds wonderful. Two, I'm going to hit two birds with one stone and uh, see an eclipse and watch the waterfalls come. And I uh, gather a crowd. I, we, we set up there. We're doing solar projection. And everyone's there. People are gathering around. And we're looking. Everything's going good. And all of a sudden, as we're looking at the sun, mist is forming into a cloud. A cloud. A big, big cloud. And it just blocks out the sun completely. And it's not going anywhere. What's happening? Eclipse cooling. Condensation, it's cooling and forming a cloud in this way, in this, in this manner. This is where it's different because there's moisture there. So the clouds will go over that cold water of, of uh, Niagara Falls. So I'm like, guys, we got to pack up everything and get out of here. We're on the run. So we go north about nine miles, and I see clearing. I think, I say, I think we're safe enough, and uh, we get perfect annularity. Of the crowd as much, but we're on the grass. We're we're enjoying it, and it's nice, and we see it. And that's 1984, yeah, 1994. And uh, it was special because I'm back in eclipse, but I hadn't seen this total solar eclipse. Now I get a job. I go to, I get a job at CBS News. From uh, I'm uh, I'm working with my dad in the business, and I'm doing uh, selling hot dogs and hamburgers and coffee on a coffee truck and making my way through graduate school and I'm one credit shy of finishing my degree. But I get an opportunity from a friend whom I asked, I said, hey, listen, if I wanted to volunteer an intern at a, at a television station, could I do so? And, uh, uh, you know, look, work in television because I have all this experience. Uh, she said, no, why don't you just come to CBS News? I'm like, what? Right in New York. Yeah, I'll show you how to do it. I'm like, yeah, so I'm telling my job, I got to do two jobs at once. Can I leave this a little early? I got over to Manhattan each day, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, all day working. And uh, she's, she's teaching me, and then Haiti blows up, and something happens with the president, and she goes down there with John Roberts, and uh, she abandons me and sets me up with this other guy as supervisor, and he trains me. I get the job at CBS News. I pass. I'm making it really short. There's obviously a lot more. But... I become gainfully employed, and I now have money to go back to my passions. And so I take a trip in 1998, four years later after working at CBS News, and I go down to Aruba. Aruba is sort of like a hot desert island uh, just north of Venezuela. And this is my second total solar eclipse. I, and I, I'm on the west side, and I first meet uh, Jay Pasikoff just because I know he's there, and I just go up, hi, Jay Pasquale, no real shaking hands. I was like, oh, what do you think, blah, 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 because I always read about, I read about him as a kid. Jay Pasquale is going to become my friend. And I s decide to go to Baby Beach, which is on the west, the east side of the island, because it gets more totality. I was looking for more. And uh, I drive over there. It's totally overcast and drizzling. I'm like, what am I doing here? It was just fine where I was. I drive back, and I'm with my girlfriend, and she's laughing the whole time while we're driving on this road, going through the refineries and all that. I said, how often does it rain in Aruba? They said, one day a year. <laughs> yes. But notice the date. What's that date there? Remember that date, February 26th. So we see it. It's beautiful. And that's the day I see shadow bands. So I'm there setting up on the beach, and at my feet, I feel like squirrels are running across my feet. Shadow man, shadow man, shadow man. Just screaming and reacting, because it's all happening in my mind. And they're laughing at me. They're having a beer. You know, my girlfriend and the neighbors come out. Hey, I got beers for you. You know, I'm on the beach. And I'm freaking out. Shadow bands, this and that. And this, I saw this purplish sky. That's my impression. And that's another thing. When you go through eclipses, your impressions are just like eyewitness testimony. It, of no value. It's just to you. There's no forensic thing, evidence on it. It's just a basis of your impression of it. They say it's the blackest thing you've ever seen. It's not black. I see blue now, but you'll see different things. Now, again, gainfully employed, I afford Cabin One, and this is a good story. Cabin One, 
which is just above the bridge. And I can look down and wave to the captain every day of the ship as we cross with the SS France, which is converted into the SS Norway, this old, old, old ship that was designed to have the length of a, such to do five waves across the Atlantic for stabilization. It just was old. It was old. But the Titanic came out, and they sold it in terms, it looks like the Titanic. Well, I don't know if it's good or not, but OK. Uh, so we go to uh, Southampton. We sail. We go to Dublin. We have Guinness. And we enjoy that. And we go back out at sea. And they're doing a close encounters rendezvous with another cruise ship. And they're doing dun, 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 dun. And that's like the, the the Merchant Marine call or something. I, and I, I'm putting two and two together, Close Encounters. I said, that's where I heard it, the Steven Spielberg film. And, I'm, and it's totally overcast, completely overcast. So I am freaking out. And the captain, this is not the captain, but the, they, I, yell, I go over the, the, uh, the, the balcony. I'm like, you need to go further. Go, go down more. It's clear down there in the, in the Isles of Skilly because I have a radio. And I'm listening to, to local broadcasts, and I'm hearing what they say. Yeah, the skies are perfectly blue here, and I'm in overcast, and I see red. Red means it's clear and sunny. That's red in the horizons, clear and sunny. And that's another important part of total solar eclipses. And I'm telling the captain to go. I'm telling the captain, I like, repeat, <laughs> you need to go over there. So he, he's like, I was told to be over here. And... I then take my maps, I have my own maps, I plot my own, and I run down to the bridge, and I don't know how I get on the friggin' bridge, but I tell people, I'm here to see the captain with his bridge. Now, if any of you saw the Titanic, the carpenter comes with the things because the damn thing has been breached with four bulkheads, and it's going to sink the Titanic in the movie. But I'm not doing that. I just want you to see the eclipse. But for me, it's sinking if we don't see it. We went all this way. So... The captain says, I don't want to talk to this guy. You talk to this guy. And why is he on my bridge? I'm, I'm throwing it off. I go back. But what happens is I go, I'm, I'm out there in this overcast. And in the middle of totality, in this completely overcast sky, the sky opens up. And I see totality for 30 seconds perfectly there. So I saw that total solar eclipse in the worst weather, it's not where a lot of people were washed out. So that's also important to note when people talk about weather. Take it with a grain of salt. But what's fun, this is the longest hallway ever built on Earth. <laughs> and if you notice, some of the elderly people are on there. And if you were going to dinner, and if someone with a walker walked in front, it would take you three hours before you got to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so there was, thank God there was a starboard and a port uh, hallway to run. Uh, and the next photograph, it's not sad. It's, it's what is true. And I live in New York, and I was part of it. And it's, uh, as the director of news operations for CBS, having an antenna on the Empire State Building. Uh, yeah, we lost them. But uh, those days, I love taking pictures of the World Trade Center. It's very much part of my life. And uh, I won't get into that because it's, uh, it's personal to me. Um, so here's the next one, a partially eclipse. Baldwin, New York. What's Baldwin, New York? My hometown where I grew up since I was four years old until I went to college. And one of the three things you want to do as an eclipse chaser, as they're calling me, is see an eclipse from your home, your own backyard, see an eclipse on your birthday, or see an eclipse in the same place twice. Those are the things. Same place twice. That's sinking in, right? <laughs> so I finally, this is as far as I can drag my family to see an eclipse, the driveway. <laughs> it won't go any further with me. I'm the nut son who goes around the world to see eclipses. Then on June 11th, I go to my friend's house. I was, this is after 9-11, I was director of news operations. I stepped down. I, uh, I didn't like that politics came into play as soon as the dust settled at CBS. And politics is no place for work. 
I believe in work. Annular eclipse of Madrid, Spain. I leave CBS, I resign because I stepped down. And when you step down, it never works out. You, they say you're going to have six months before you're let go. I lasted three years. Three years. But I traveled the world with some of my money before I decided what I was going to do. And one of the things I did when I traveled was get married. So that was a big thing. Uh, now, Greece. My dad is from Greece and he lives there. And this eclipse is going to Libya and Turkey. The United States now has relations with Omar Gaddafi. And Omar Gaddafi and I forgot which American official was with him in the tent. I don't remember now, but uh, I could find out. They set up in Libya, and they're setting up camps, and it's all open. Libya is open. Like, I don't believe this. Is really? Libya is just going to be like a democracy? Friendly relations. But there's a tiny little island, only a stone's throw from Turkey, where there's a NATO thing called Castellorizo. It's a beautiful fishing village. The site and scene of many movies. I forgot the name of that beautiful movie. The Italians are dominating the Greeks, and they fall in love with each other because they're uh, on the Axis powers. And uh, they don't get they, it's uno fazza, uno fazza, they call it, right? So we, I called Jay Pasikoff again because he happens to be there. We're not friends, but he sa I said, what do you think? Go to the mountain. So I plotted my maps. We go to the mountain, and I didn't include a picture, but we do see the eclipse. But clouds form again on the mountain. Again, it's that condensation problem because of the cooling. Now. The cooling works in two ways. It can condense and make clouds, or it can get rid of clouds. But I won't talk about the science. But we saw the eclipse, and we saw it in Greece. And that was the only place seen in Greece, so we saw it in the homeland of my family, and I went with my cousins and such. And then Russia. Now, Jay Pasikoff advertises on a bulletin board that I have space to go to Russia if anybody's interested. I'm like, yes, I'm interested. And I'm still gainfully employed. And uh, I meet him in Park Avenue uh, with his wife and the mother-in-law, who used to work with Milton Friedman, uh, Anna Schwartz. Anna Schwartz and Milton Friedman did their monetary banking uh, back in the Great Depression. And uh, I went out to meet her. She's reading the New York Times at like 98 years old. So uh, what a woman. And uh, I go to Siberia. And I joined his expedition. And it's quite a, th quite a thing. I'm going there, I'm packed, and they're going through all my suitcase. What's this guy American doing? And like, I'm on my own because they had already been there. I came at the last minute because of work. I show up, and they're going through everything. And finally, they let me go. They can't find anything, filters and things like that. But then I put this picture of their lab because this is like Bob Bear's lab. <laughs> now, if you notice, Everything here is frozen from 1989 and 90, <laughs> from the collapse of Rome. Now, I'm not going to say Bob's is like that exactly, but I love Bob's because you can go back in time. I found something from 1891, so you're guilty. <laughs> Again, a beautiful eclipse, clear day, different dynamics. And one of the things you don't want to do with locals is take their picture. Because after I stopped, she cursed at me in every word in Russian, I don't know. <laughs> China. Oh, that took a doing. Went to the embassy in New York, no windows, no talking. You don't know what's going on. You just pushed on this, that. It took a while. I get the visa. OK, it's in Chinese. I don't know what it says. Fly all the way. You fly north. It's like you're going to Albany from New York. Where am I going? China. Passing up Canada. You flip over, you see the pole, you see the aurora. I take a picture of a test pattern because I'm in TV. That's interesting to me. CCTV, Beijing, China. And this is what's on TV. I'm in another land, another world. And it's beautiful in the mountains and down below. Lotus flowers. 
This was the hottest day on earth I ever spent. It was 180 degrees with 100% humidity. I was dying, dying. And like, why are we taking a walk in the park? It's not nice. <laughs> we go to eat and I start taking a picture. The guy jumps over the counter ready to kill me and break my camera. No pictures, I mean in Chinese, but it's, I understood that. I understood that. No pictures. The only thing I saw that I recognized was Walmart. <laughs> Charles is below here. He's now my good friend. He works in Manhattan. But it was an experience. And we did see it was the longest eclipse of the 21st century. And we saw five minutes and 30 seconds. Now here's the eclipse that I didn't go to. Why did I put it in here? Because price gouging in Chile for, the, for Easter Island, they just sent it up to $7,000. And at some point, an eclipse chaser has a limit. <laughs> 7000 What are you kidding me? They end up having empty hotel rooms and empty seats on the aircraft because they price gouge. Don't price gouge. It doesn't work. Backfires gives you a bad name. And uh, I found out, though, I could get to Patagonia, Argentina for $1,400 round trip. The whole thing, I think, is a deal. I talked to my wife. I'm married then. And uh, she's like, what are we doing? You're going to be going to eclipses all your life? And I'm like, OK, this is just the beginning of the end because we're not getting along. <laughs> eclipses are not leaving. I know I'm married to you, but I'm sorry, but I, eclipses, I'm not even going to tell you my relationship with them. <laughs> so that's it. That didn't work out. So that just, I put that in there. And there was only a 5% chance of seeing that eclipse. And we saw it. This was an annual eclipse in Socorro, New Mexico. I'm going with Jay Pasterkoff pretty regularly. And it's nice there at NRO. It now doing radio astronomy. And they filmed contact there. And we're, we're doing uh, sunspots uh, again, like I did in 1979. And not really much scientific value. I hate to say that. But uh, we're there, and I, I'm behind it. But I do take my first unfiltered video of the annular eclipse. And then you, here's an unfiltered of the sunset. And then it goes down even further. Then Sandy hits New York. And I'm in the newsroom. And then my mother's got the house. And the house next door where she gets rent from. And it floods them. It's a disaster. So I'm running back and forth covering the news from Channel 2 in emergency generators and all of this and that. It's, it's, a, it's a disaster in New York. We're flooded. All of downtown's flood destroyed. And uh, I'm covering it and covering it and covering it as best I can as a supervisor and a microwave specialist. And, uh, but I still know there's an eclipse. And I'm telling Jay Paskoff, they're already there in place. I don't know if I can come. I don't know if I can do it. I got, you know, it's, Sandy destroyed us. As soon as I felt that the air was clear, I said, I think you guys are in good shape. I'm going to take a couple of days off. And where do I go? Australia. Yes. Where Bob's going and Chris is going and some and uh, I forgot your name. What's your name again? Richard. Richard. I'm so sorry, Richard. You're gonna enjoy it. However, the cloud monster came. I call it the cloud monster because if I showed the silhouette of the picture, which I didn't find, it had a nose and a mouth and a jaw, and it swallowed the total solar eclipse. <laughs> I call it the cloud miser. People laugh. I, I, you should laugh. I laugh, but they laugh even the eclipse people because a lot of people got clouded up and a lot of people got cleared. If I was 20 feet away, it could be clear. And it happened here in Carbondale in some ways. But I did see a three quarters total eclipse, something like that, you know? La Lope, Gabon, Africa. Oh, another story. I'm trying to make it quicker. This time, Jay Pasikoff and his travel agent pick a place that I say, guys, this is not on totality. Like, what are you talking about? It's not on totality. Look on the Google Maps. It's not on there. And Google then was like, uh, it, was, it wasn't as smooth where you zoom in and out. It went to picture, picture, picture. And then the La Lope Hotel only showed up in one of the frames in the zoom. Uh, and I said, look, it's not there. And then Michael Zeiler's had it. And so we're at the American Embassy in, in Gabon. And Jay is talking about astronomy and eclipses. And afterward, I said, Jay, where are we going? And he's like, he's sitting down. 
I don't know. I said, what do you mean you don't know? And I'm in front of everyone. I shouldn't be doing this in front of everyone, not personally. And uh, he freaks out. He goes, I don't know. I don't know where we're going. I said, well, I need to know where we're going. So we're going back and everyone's silent. And we're at the embassy. And he, I said, we need to scout. We need to reconnoiter. We need to go out there. He goes, are you willing to go 13 hours through the jungle to do this? Yes, I am willing. I will do it. Uh, you pay for the gas. <laughs> and I find a site. We 13 hours, bumpy road, and the beautiful elephants are there. But here's the thing with the elephants. You don't want to get too close in your car. As much as I'd like, get closer, closer. I want to take a picture. They'll flip your car. They don't want you. They're protective. I don't know if any of you watched Yellowstone in the prequel, 1923, but I don't want to say more. But now I know. <laughs> And then the locals were so nice and helped. It poured rain, poured rain. We all had to go and cover our stuff and all that. And we just sat inside and there was this guy, he was like a witch doctor or some local old soothsayer. He says, don't worry, this happens all the time. It's going to be clear. <laughs> and it was clear. And we saw a beautiful eclipse. And that's my first process photo I did myself. September 7, 2014. It's not an eclipse day, but it's a day I'm eclipsed. I have a stroke. And I'm rushed to the emergency room and try to recover. I'm totally paralyzed. And uh, I'm, the doctor's talking to me about umbers and penumbras in the brain. And I'm like, I didn't want to even say about the eclipse because that's what we call it there. But I'm, I'm going to speed through this because of the time. Uh, the carrot on the stick for me for those six months is to get to the next eclipse. And I had canceled all my plans. Uh, they said it was non-refundable, but I knew it was going to be refundable because they could sell it for more because of the demand. And I got my money back immediately, the $3,000 I posited. But now I don't have the money because I'm not working anymore. I lose my job. And uh, I, uh, this is kind of touching because these astronomer friends are the ones who reached out and helped me, knew my passion and love for it. And they came, one Michael Zyla who makes Mac came to my home, stayed with me, carried my bags. Jay Pasikoff gave me money and Shad, Dr. Shadia Habal uh, put up housing for me and everyone took care of me to see that eclipse. And I was limping all over the place and I'm wearing, I just, I see it's like a pose. There's no cane. I've got spikes on my shoes and all that. This is only by the North Pole. This is where we took the expeditions from to the North Pole. Uh, I forgot the names and such, but uh, they, they, they launched from there in their, their airships and such. That's the global seed vault. So if the world has an apocalypse, uh, Argentina can go down and say, can we have our seeds back? You know, we reserved our seeds. We're going to plant again. Okay, maybe this makes us happy. But meanwhile, with a little bit of... I don't know what kind of warming's going on, but water's dripping down the damn door, and it only has one key. I was like, I can, I can break this open with a skeleton key. And uh, every country has their seeds. This is the morning of the eclipse. You see the clouds? And I'm like, oh, but I'm not even thinking about that. But I'm a disaster because I'm recovering from the stroke. And uh, what happens? A beautiful total solar eclipse. And I say, I had no emotion, nothing. I'm ruined for life. I burnt out my brain. I short-circuited myself, being a Tasmanian devil, working so hard. And then I played back a recording, and I heard myself completely emotional and loving this eclipse. And it touched me. I said, I'm alive. That's what I said. Cape Town, South Africa was a partial eclipse, and you can see the real photo there. It is, it is probably, it's probably one of the most beautiful places on Earth you can go to with the best food and uh, wine and such. Now, the, the thing that made Mike famous is the one that wasn't supposed to happen. I'm going to really speed through this because time is flying, and it's a whole lifetime. But we arranged to take a regular charter flight and convinced coax uh, Alaskan Airlines to delay the departure, not on the day, but in the schedule to leave at 2.15. And we give them a flight plan how to intercept the eclipse over the Pacific Ocean. 
we meet with the pilots and all. It's all professional because we're scientists. We, we're the ones who invented it all. Not me, but them, you know, is, is what I'm saying. And what happens? They asked me, Alaskan Airlines asked me to do a video and I say, I'll do a video on my own camera. They give me a camera and, they, and I asked them to cut the audio out when you do it, okay? Shadow coming in. Oh yeah, there it is. There's the shadow. Wow, look at that. Here it comes. Oh my God, look at it. Here comes the shadow, look at that. It's like a tornado. Oh my God, here we go. Here we go. Oh my God. Oh my God. Here we go. Look at this. Oh my God, it's coming. The moon's shadow is coming. It is coming. Oh my God, here it comes. Look at this. I've never seen it like this, ever. Only in a plane. No flashes. Oh my God, here we go. Look at it. Oh my God. Whoa. Look at that. Oh my God. Here we go. Oh my God, it's coming right over. It's like a storm. Look at this. Oh my God, we're getting close. It's getting close. No filter. Oh my God, Corona, there it is. Diamond, Bellies Beads, Bellies Beads Diamond Ring. Look at that, Corona, totality, totality. Oh my God, look at that. Totality, oh my God, look at those streamers. Look at the crumbs, it's all, prominences. Look at that, prominences. Look at the moon. Red all around, full shadow, completely elongated. Oh my God, look at that. Look at that streamer, seven o'clock. Prominences, 12 o'clock, two o'clock, 10 o'clock. Streamers, look at that, elongated. Oh my God. Look at that. Absolutely amazing. Oh my God, totality. Oh, look at that. Oh my God. Wow. Wow, look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at that curved shadow. Look at that. Look at it coming in the light. Oh my God. Passing right in the sh shadow of the moon. Look at that. So, so look at those prominences. You can see them with your naked eye. This chromosphere. Look at that. Here comes the shadow. It's lifting up. It's going out. It's going out. Going up to the atmosphere. Oh, look at down there. Light. Oh, what is it? It's beating. It's cr oh, there's a flare. Look at that diamond ring. Look at that. Oh my God. Diamond ring. Oh, look at that. Oh my God. Wow. Oh my God. Look at that. All right, I'm going to cut that out because uh, I say it 21 times and I sent it to Alaskan <laughs> Airlines. I said, please take out the audio. What do they do? They put it on. It's got 5 million views on uh, uh, their channel and on YouTube and then on Facebook. It's got 10 million. Then it goes around the world as this astronomer loses it at 35,000 feet. <laughs> <laughs> One wrote, this is the happiest man alive. Uh, has so many articles. Uh, so we go to La Reunion, France for another to uh, annual eclipse and uh, go see a beautiful volcano except for on our ride down with Xavier. He sails into a potato field and breaks the car in half. We're all fine. I'm like, all right, are we getting a new car? They tow a new car up to the volcano, give it to us and come down. Then we're off to Sarmiento, Argentina. But what's important here is what's the date? February 26th. You see it? And that's important, and I'll tell you why. And we see it, this annular eclipse, it's very thin, and you can see, uh, I think this is a video, you can see progression. This is an animation that I built, and I, I purposely went on the limit line, so it kind of turns on itself. It's a different experience, and 
people will talk about the biblical thing of Joshua saying how the sun stood still, so all this stuff. So that's involved there. But here's the three eclipses. You'll see that in periodicities, every 19 years of the metonic cycle, and many religions, Islamic and Judaic, uh, base it on this uh, lunar solar calendar. And February 26, February 26, February 26, now it goes off, no longer February 6. It just moved down, uh, periodicities. Then there's Carbondale and Illinois after all the preps with Bob. And what do I do? I freak out again. And Bob is like, Mike, there's going to be consequences for what you've done. And I go to, I take my, my, my friend. And of course, there's people that, I know you, you, you have that eclipse video. And I, she wants to watch it with me. So we watch it. But my best friend is with his son. And they're happy. And my other best friend is with his son. He's already taken on a career in astronomy. Based on that day, we see a great eclipse. And I'm down in Vicuña, uh, Chile. And I'm not going to show you this next video, but it's, it's a little different. Uh, let's see if I can go. No, I'm going to go there. And then there's uh, Karachi, Pakistan, because I didn't go there, but I arranged it and communicated with someone in Pakistan and told them exactly what to do as if I were there. We had a great communication, and it got published. And I did it on YouTube because of COVID. And I got somebody in Guam. We put together a whole piece and such. And uh, the next eclipse that I got to see was in New York, Greece, New York. And I drove uh, seven hours to get up there. And I think I got the film, only film of its kind. And I call these the double headlights. And they say it's always darkest before the dawn. In this case, it's true because it, as dawn was breaking, it was dark. It was dark, but then it got lighter, and then it got darker than sunrise. And like these headlights come up. I was, and I have a video of that. That's on my all this on my YouTube channel. And there's this beautiful crescent sunrise coming up Lake Ontario in New York. And I'm again the happiest man alive. And my last solar eclipse is on an airplane somewhere near Antarctica over the Scotia Sea. We have two twin Dreamliners flying like in a Top Gun formation. And it, they're having fun, the pilots. Like, just all right, stay close, but not too close, you know. And we're looking, and it's clear, and I'm freaking out again. And this one's putting me in actually tears. I was so happy. Maybe after COVID and all the stuff, uh, which I caused another shadow, and that's why I called it Getting Through Shadows. Here I am live on Fa Fox News. I did a broadcast there with my little iPhone. And here's Carbondale, April 8th, 2024. And only one year, one day to do it all over again. And that's it.